Darwin's theory proven wrong. Did humans really come from apes? A shocking truth. Are we really 99% ape? You've heard it. Humans and apes share 99% of their DNA. But what if that number isn't the full story? Stay till the end to uncover shocking research that challenges everything you've been told about human evolution. What are the core concepts of the theory, huh? Common origin, gradual change. Two, it is believed that organisms evolved gradually from a shared ancestor with changes accumulating over time based on a structural similarities and geographic patterns. Three, another core concept of the theory is adaptation, evolution, extinction, selection. Four, the theory applies that natural selection led to evolution. Non-adaptive species went extinct. Now let's look at the pillars of the theory. At the heart of this framework is that a living organism emerged from inanimate matter. Another central aspect of the framework is nature grants living organisms new traits that transform them to different species. A subsequent pillar focuses on acquired traits assuming that these traits are inherited. The theory continues with a focus on nature, assuming that nature builds through adaptation. The theory posits that natural selection blindly builds complex organs. Did you know that Darwin believed in spontaneous generation, that life could come from non-living things? But 200 years earlier, Francesco Reddy proved maggots come from flies, not meat. Later, Louis Pasteur confirmed microbes come from the air, not food. These experiments disproved spontaneous generation, the foundation Darwin relied on. Did you know that Darwin believed living organisms evolved without intention? It is a myth that new traits can emerge outside an organism's genetic pool. Proof in the peas. Mendel closed the door on random genes. Mendel's laws of inheritance show that all traits in offspring come from the parents' existing genes, not from new genes appearing outside the genetic pool. Epigenetics reveals environmental factors influence gene expression, but do not introduce new genes. These environmental factors only activate or suppress existing ones. Weissman tested Darwin's idea by cutting off the tails of mice for nightmare generations. Despite this, their offspring were still born with tails, proving that acquired traits, like a severed tail, are not inherited. Now, what remains of the theory? You might think that natural selection is what currently remains of the theory. Natural selection usually means that it's harder for a weaker animal to survive in tough environments. For examples, a slow deer might get caught by predators more easily. But Darwin went beyond this idea and said that small random changes over time could create complex body systems from simple ones. The conclusion of Darwin's theory is that all living organisms evolved without intent or guidance through natural processes alone, without the need for a purposeful creator or intelligent design. Was genetic data misused to prove Darwin? Turns out, not all genes were invited, only the ones that helped prove Darwin with a little help from interpretation bias. We'll break down the proof in a bit. They didn't follow the genes, they cherry-picked the ones that fit. Scientists often focus on the small percentage of DNA that shows similarity across species while ignoring the portions that do not match. To back the theory, they labeled whole sections of our DNA as junk. But spoiler, that so-called junk actually have important roles. We'll get into it soon. They use similarity as a shortcut for common ancestry, but copy-paste doesn't mean same origin. The presence of similar genes in two organisms does not automatically imply they evolved from a common ancestor. It could also suggest a common designer, God. So what drives evolution? 
Random mutations occur due to factors like heat, chemicals, or cosmic rays. Natural selection eliminates harmful mutations and preserves beneficial ones. Most mutations happen in body cells, not reproductive cells, so they can't be inherited. Only mutations in egg or sperm cells can be passed to the next generation. Most mutations are harmful or neutral, rarely beneficial, so if they're not inherited or not helpful, can mutations really cause new species? Is natural selection proof of evolution? Natural selection explains how existing traits help organisms survive better in their environment, like faster rabbits escaping predators. But it doesn't explain where new traits or new species come from. Selection only works on traits that are already there. It can't create new genetic information. What was once thought to prove evolution has now been proven wrong. Whale pelvic bones, what was once considered proof of evolution was proven wrong. In 2010, researchers discovered that the whale pelvic bone, previously considered a vestigial structure and used as evidence for evolution, is actually essential for reproduction. Human appendix. The appendix was thought to be a vestigial organ with no significant function, a leftover from our evolutionary past. Research has shown that the appendix plays a role in the immune system by maintaining gut flora. Embryonic development. The development of human embryos was said to go through stages resembling those of other species, suggesting common ancestry, such as gill slits. The gill slits were found to be pharyngeal arches, which serve different purposes. Junk DNA. Non-coding DNA, previously referred to as junk DNA, was once thought to be the leftover material from evolution with no purpose. Many non-coding regions have been found to have critical functions, such as regulating gene expression. The truth about human ape DNA. Similarity. For years, it was claimed that humans and chimpanzees share 98, 99% of their DNA. Turns out, the 99% match only includes the easiest to compare parts, i.e. protein coding genes. The rest didn't even make the cut. What happens when we look at the whole genome? Newer research, like the work of Dr. Jeffrey Tompkins, analyzed the entire genome instead of only the similar parts. His findings show that genetic similarity drops to around 70%. Other researchers, i.e. Dr. Richard Buggs, an evolutionary geneticist at Queen Mary University of London, suggest it may be even lower, closer to 30% when all differences are considered. You can find reference in the comments.